and they just quit. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Quitting. It's gonna quit on me. They just quit. Awesome, I am. Quitting. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Good morning, all my lovely people. This is Drew Video DNA Reviews, and today we are back with another Shadowverse video. We are going to be covering the mini expansion, the cards that are coming up for the mini expansion. So I hope with all my heart and soul that I can just blaze through these cards, give you a nice, maybe like 10 minutes, it probably won't happen, but you know what? We can try time challenge, as, as my friends would say. Anyways, let's start with the first card that was revealed. Uh, Arcus, Soulful Manager, 7 drop, 6-6, six, six. Uh, Crystallize 3, Countdown of 10, can't be destroyed or banished, that's an interesting one, by spells and effects, can be destroyed by Countdown, so it's only destroyed by Countdown, essentially. When an allied follower evolves, summon a ghost and subtract 2 from the I mean, let's Countdown, last word, summon an Arcus, Soulful Manager, uh which can be destroyed by, or banished by spells and effects. So neither the, neither the amulet form of Arcus nor actual Arcus can be banished or destroyed by spells and effects. And at the end of the turn, change this follower's attack and defense to X slash X. X equals your current turn number. So, yeah, so he's probably gonna be like, but there's something that you can involve him a few times as he's, um, like twice. You play him on turn three, the minus four. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna do the math right here because it's way too early for all of that. But what I will do, excuse me, I have to put my phone in my charger because it is dying. What I will do. It's just assume that he'll probably be out by like you know if you're if you're lucky by turn six or seven, which will make him a seven seven if he doesn't die, which will make him an eight eight if he doesn't die, and so on and so forth. So this is a card that needs to be killed. I don't know how we're gonna kill him. Um, I assume he's going to be in a Evo deck, and yeah, it's gonna be cute. I don't know how strong he's going to be, but. Yeah, I definitely think this is a cute mechanic, and it's not, you know, I'm, I think Evo Sword is something that's definitely w worth looking into, considering, like, Union Burst and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Alright, next we have, also, there's not gonna be any edits, I'm not editing, I'm not editing this video, I am very, oh, I've got one more card, whoops, Princess Knight. Ooh, I almost completely skipped over this card. A three drop, three two. Random fanfare randomly put a, f a follower with fanfare from your deck into your hand. Uh, evolve, recover one play point, subtract two from the union burst of all followers with union burst in your hand. This card is so painfully niche, I really can't see it being used in like any deck whatsoever. It's just very. A card with fanfare, like. So, any card. Like, literally half the decks. Like, half of the deck. Yeah. This card is kind of silly. I don't think anyone's gonna use it. I don't think it's gonna be that viable. Next up, we have... Manifest Devotion. Uh, select an allied amulet and summon four copies of that amulet. Um, so I never did some research for these cards, and I honestly cannot see what you, this could be good with. If anyone in the chat has any clues, then by all means, but I for one can't, I can't really see it. I can't, there's like very little, like, what's worth playing this and essentially losing so much momentum? That I mean, I feel like you can have like a one-off of these and like, End game. this card can be strong. <laughs> you can use it on, like, the 5-4 the that can be targeted. And then 
some four copies of this, but you essentially lock your board though. So yeah, even then you lose. Cause you put some in four copies, but they don't have the same countdown. Like, you know, the countdown will start from like the original, like beginning of it. Like say you're at, your amulet's about to pop off. So in one turn it's about to pop off. You're gonna summon four more of the same amulet, but they're gonna start at like three. So yeah, I don't understand how this card is gonna work. I'm, I'm sure some degenerate is going to totally break it or not. Who knows? Vortex Colony. At the end of your turn, randomly put a guard, guard form, golem or strike form golem into your hand. Each of these followers can be added to your hand only once with this effect. So you will guarantee give them both when you crystallize this card. And it is of 957 with ward. Fanfare deal X to all enemies, including the face. X equals the number of allied artifact cards with different names destroyed this match. So, artifacts getting more support, which is cute. I don't mind. I don't mind artifacts getting more support. They really need to get rid of Acceleradium. But, <laughs> that aside, artifacts, they're not too strong at this point. So, well, sure, why not? Oh, this card. God, I hate this card. Courtly Dance. Random. Put a random Swordcast follower that costs one play point and two play points from your deck into play. Enhance eight. Then put a random Swordcast follower that costs three play points from your deck into play and evolve those followers. Evolve effects will not activate for those followers. So yeah, this card's kind of dumb because it's just like evil support, evil support. Um, or you could just do this, like, for, um, an aggro deck, which is still, you know, really good. This card is really good for aggro deck as well. Um, yeah, it's very similar to, um, the card from Blood that allows you to draw two and summon two bats. Um... Luckily, you don't draw any cards, it's just that enhanced A, you summon three things and then ball them all. So, like I said, this is, yeah, this card's really busted. I can't wait to, I uh, can't wait for it to fuck me up. Man, Sword gets everything good, I really can't. Dark Prison Dragon, three drop, three two, with Ambush, Fanfare, if Overflow is active for you, lose one play point orb, then gain plus one, plus one in Storm. Uh, it's very interesting that if you lose one play point just to get plus one, plus one in Storm. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's worth it. It probably is, because you evolve it that six damage to the face. And then it also gets, it originally has Ambush, so this is a very aggressive dragon card. They're really trying to make dragon aggressive, which, you know, that's pretty cute. I like that a lot, so this is a fun card. Dark, I said dark, dark mage attack, yes. Um, forbidden dark mage, a drop two, two, crystallize one, earth sigil. Your leader can't take more than four damage at a time. At the start of your turn, perform earth right. If an earlier played earth sigil amulet is destroyed this way, restore one defense to your leader. At the end of your turn, draw a card. So that in itself is a very awesome and yet fascinating mechanic. So if you play a bunch of amulets before you play this one, because remember, it destroys the amulets, I think, in the order that you played it. So destroy the ones from the right to left. So if you played a bunch of right, like you play like three, this card doesn't go away, which means you'll keep healing for one, you'll keep drawing cards, and you'll still have that ability that you can't take more than four damage at a time. So that in itself is really interesting. And then, it's fan variability, gain plus X plus X, X equals the amount of allied Earth Sigil amulets destroyed this match, deal Y to an enemy, Y equals this follower's, this follower's attack. So, in addition, you'll get two, you'll deal two plus what, however many amulets you destroyed this match, which I think that's a really awesome, this is such an awesome card to play. Um, you know, Earth... Sorry, Earth Rune really needed, yeah, Dirt Rune really needed the support or needed a good finisher like this. So because or or Calcus or no, Ari Calcum Golem is gone. So yeah, this is a great card. I am here for it. 
Next up, we have Grudge Knight to drop two two. Um, <clears throat> enhance seven gain plus three plus three and ward destroy an enemy follower. Last words destroy X defense to your leader X equals his followers attack. This card seems really random to me. It's a good card because you kill something and you gain ward, but and then you also heal. Like it's a very defensive card. I think. This is probably best in a what you calls it deck, a path to Hades kind of deck, where you're just you know trying to get the thirty shadows because a card like this you don't even need to like you can just kill something and then you'll heal four or five when this dies. It also has war, so it's gonna kill something most likely in the process because they have to trade into it. Yeah, this card's really good. I don't see it's gonna be used a lot unless you're doing Hades, but it's really good though. Ah, more Earth Citadel support, more Rune Dirt Room support. Gotta love it. Mirror of Truth. Fanfare. Select an enemy follower that costs two play points or less and summon an allied copy of it. If another allied Earth Citadel is in play, Put a verdict ritual into your hand. A verdict ritual is a two play point spell that you can burn your opponent or anything else for three damage. And if you have an earth siddle, you can draw also. Oh, excuse me, you can also draw a card. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, so this is another cute card because it it's an earth sigil, it's not just an amulet. So you can play this, copy something, it can rush, and you. I wonder if you'll get a fan, if the fanfare will go off. I feel like the answer is no, but if it did, that'd be super cool. Uh, this combined with the other card, it's the other legendary, it's go it's gonna be fun times for RuneCraft. RuneCraft's coming back with Dirt Rune, and I'm, I think it might be my first deck that I play. It won't be my first deck, it'll be my second. You understand, you understand why by the time I'm done with the video, why it won't be my first. Uh, next up we have Luxblade Ariet. It's a five-four-five five sword card because sword doesn't get enough good things. Clearly, fanfare. If at least one allied follower has evolved this match, gain ward. So evolve once, and you're just a five-four-five five at ward. If three have evolved, recover three play points. So it'll become a four-five at ward that cost two. All right, then at least at, then if at least five have evolved, restored five defense to your leader. So it'll become a two drop, four five at ward that heals you for five. And then if you at least evolve seven times, draw a card until there's seven. You basically draw your whole hand. Draw until you have seven. All right, yeah. So yeah, this card's broken and sword gets everything good. Got it. I'm not talking about it anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna get triggered. Um, if it makes you help, guys feel any better, we definitely passed the 10 minute mark. Uh, next we have the Rare Metal Dragon. Uh, 4, 3, 3. Whenever this follower takes damage, reduce that damage to zero and give this follower minus one, minus one. This effect activates even when attack or damage for zero. This follower is destroyed when its defense drops below wood. Excuse me. Um. So this card is like all right. My only problem with it is that it's it's fantastic for trading. Fantastic for trading. However, um, in a ramp deck, I think cards that have can protect you or the more defensive are better. And this card isn't defensive. Like, yeah, no, it's not, it's not offensive. I feel like it's going to be really sticky, especially when you evolve it and you trade into something, it's going to just be a 4-4. Four, four. So it's, it's really sticky. Unless you have a destruction card or a banish card, it's going to be hard to get rid of. Excuse me. But I don't know, maybe I would have preferred if it had ward. Maybe it would have been too broken if it was ward. But yeah, this is a, this is a very interesting mechanic. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Hmm. It's a rare metal dragon. I'm surprised they didn't make it Machina, but I'm assuming they're done with Machina cards for now. 
Oh, a blood card. Next we have Eo, the Enchanting Educator. Two drop two to a drain. Union burst. Select two enemy followers. Deal X damage to the first follower and Y damage to the second follower. X equals the attack of the second follower. Y equals the attack to Y equals the attack of the first follower. So it's very much like that other card um that exists for Portal or does the same thing. Something Captivating Conductor, I think. So it does the same thing. Um, when you evolve it, it only becomes a 3-3. But you deal 2 damage to all enemies. So this is actually a pretty cute card. Because it gives you Drain. Which I think in self ping is very important. Recovering health is very important. Because you're going to be hurting yourself a lot. Um, and then the Drain... Sorry, and then you get to do two damage to all enemies, which, you know, self-ping also could use some board clear. It can really use some board clear. As someone who has tested self-ping for a disgusting amount of hours, it can use some blood clear. So, this card's pretty good. I'm super tempted to put this in my deck. I'm pro most probably, most probably will. Also, I love that Union Burst ability. It's very cute, very niche. Up next, we have the Goddess of the Wind, 6 drop D3. Randomly put two different Haven Craft followers with an original attack of two or less from your deck into play. This card is very weird to me because I don't see the point of it unless you're playing an Unlimited. And the only two cards, like, all the cards that you'd want to play, like the two threes with Ward, um, that cost three, or Holy Lancer, that would be cute to summon as well. But it's like, you understand, like, that's so niche. Like, the chance of you summoning that would be, like, it'd be a crapshoot. So there's not a lot of cards, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of cards that you just want to, like, outright just put into play. A lot of the cards have, like, fanfare that you'd want to, like, take advantage of. But you can't because you play Goddess of the Wind. I can't really see the point of this card. Once again, who knows, it will make sense to me. I'm sure someone here in the comments has, like, you know, thought of a way to be degenerate about it, but we shall see about that. Ha! Huh, yet another what the fuck card from Portal Craft. Ameth, Dream Emissary. Two drop two two fanfare, give another follower reward. Then if it's evolved, give it plus one, draw a card, and recover one play point. So this card could really pair well with Kalua. Karula, sorry, not Kalua. Karula. Um <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, of course, at the end game, this card can be really cute if you can evolve by then, but which Karula can because of its enhanced ability. Um, it's just really, this card is very interesting. Yeah, it just feels very another what the hell, but hey, sure, why not? <clears throat> Next, we have Green Bear L. Uh, 213, some Greenwood Guardian support. You get to put a Greenwood Guardian into your hand. And then when you evolve him, whenever an ally Greenwood Guardian comes into play, deal one damage to random enemy follower. I think this is really good. Good support for Greenwood Guardian. It's not too overbearing. Maybe two damage would have been better, but it also would have been broken. So I'm fine with one damage, because definitely towards the mid game, you end up playing a lot of these Greenwood Guardians. And now you can probably play them with like a lot less consequences. So I really like this card. Up next we have Phantasmal Fairy Dragon. Uh, it's a one 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 with Ward. Game plus X plus plus zero plus X. X equals the number of allied cards that cost one play point or less during this match. Then if X is at least 5 of all this follower, can't attack the enemy leader. So in my mind, this card is very much just Amatas support, 100%. It only costs 1, which is insane. And all you do is spam a bunch of fairies, and then you can evolve it. And then it'll just be like a 3-whatever, so it can trade. So, so you play a 1-drop, 3-8, because plus X... Cause plus X is equals five. Sorry, a three. Yeah, no, a three eight. I was I was right. And it can't while it can't attack, you can play that on turn five. And then play Divine Smithing. 
and then to have a bunch of fairies, and then this, and then next turn you just hit the face. Or, yeah, so this card's very broken. Well, not broken. It's really good, Promotaz. We'll see. It's just kind of scary. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of scared. I'm pretty much scared by this card. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have the Permafrost Behemoth, 9 drop 8-8, eight, eight. Crystallize 2, Countdown 2, Fanfare, draw 2 cards when you crystallize it. Last words, deal 2 damage to your leader. <sighs> Fanfare, deal 5 damage to an enemy leader and a random enemy follower. If your leader has taken damage during your turn at least 7 times this match, Deal 10 damage instead. Oh my Jesus, we finally found it. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the finisher we've been begging, begging for is here. And it's not broken. It's a turn 9 card. It's a turn 9 finisher. We can, I can work with this. I can work, with, I can make this work. Between the board clear chick and the other... Uh, sources of removal. We can make this work. I will make this work. I promise you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so happy with this card. It's so good and it's not broken. I think a lot of times, and I was arguing with this Oni literally for like an hour, not yesterday, but the day before. Um, how the vampire chick, she was super, like, they keep making cards that are too broken for, um, Blood, or they make cards that are totally like irrelevant or niche. For the problem with the vengeance chick is that you draw her, you win, and there's no consequences. There's nothing you gained. The problem with Dark Peace Bat, Dark Peace Bat costs seven. This costs nine. And even when they nerfed it, Dark Beast Bat cost eight, which is still like, yeah, you kind of felt the nerf, but like, it was still like, it became, instead of tier 0, it was tier 1. So, that doesn't matter. This, this being turn 9, and an 8-8, eight, eight, and then doing all of this extra shit. Love it, it's great, it's fantastic. This is a gr good job. Until you show me how broken it is, and then I have to take back my applause. I love it. I love it, I think this is gonna be really good. I can't, is this, this? is the first deck that I am going to be playing. This is the first deck right here. Oh my god, what a great card. What a great card to end this video. Thank you guys so much again for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed me quickly, quote unquote, talking about the new cards coming up for the expansion, then by all means, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out Twitter, check out Discord, it's diggity dope, but more importantly, check out Twitch, because after all, it is just Twitch. Uh, for the next video, yeah, it would most, it will most definitely be this card. You will be seeing this card, I guarantee you. <laughs> but until then, this has been Drew Duo DNA Reviews. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, bye!